amidst incarceration in prison. He was able to see, he was able to follow the Lord. He says in Philippians 1, 20 to 22, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain, he says. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, he says. This is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I choose, I would not, whether to live or to die. To live, it means for the glory of God and for Christ. And for Him, He tells us how He was uh, willing to follow God, to hope in Him, to seek Him, and to to lose all things but to follow Him. And this, he says, is the fruit of His labor. Going to prison, is it a very uh, easy thing? Uh, but for the believers that were there in Rome, well, there was also testimony Paul had. It was his uh, work as an apostle of the Lord to keep faith, to trust him, even amidst awaiting the death row. So here he tells us about the faith's fruit, resting in the Lord and faith's food, the Word of God. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let the Word of God be your mainstay. How do you keep faith? How do you rest in the Lord? It is by the Word of God. The Word of God would ensure that there is no gall in your walk with God. You are true to your profession, true to your confession. You are who you claim to be. How do we know that? Well, as you read your Bible, as we go through and see the characters that are given in, in our uh, walk, in our reading, you would see that the Spirit of God will bring to light the incidents that would show us where we have gone wrong in our own lives. And that is food for our faith. The Spirit of God is, a quick, and, is quick and powerful and it's sharper than any two-aged sword. In other words, it is able to pierce through and show us what we are truly made up of right inside us. So that there will be no hiding from God in the, even in the deepest recesses of our hearts, our life, is all exposed before God. The Word of God is faith's food to nourish us with faith to walk with Him. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the Word of God provides for us the search light which the Spirit of God, the sort of the Spirit, does with our conscience to keep it tender and soft and awakened to the will of God for us. So you see that uh, for the believer, uh, we are able to rest in God 
follow Him uh, and not have a heart of unbelief, uh, that we would not fall uh, uh, when we would take time to be nourished in the Word of God. Uh, it's important for our youth, for our young adults, uh, for our adults and the older members of the church. Let us take time to meditate upon the Word of God, to study it with prayer, and to allow it to guide our steps in every area of our lives so that we may be able to say with confidence, this is the path for me to go. Uh, well, we'll be printing perhaps a set of uh, notes on um, sickness. How does the believer view sickness? Uh, sickness comes to us and affects us in different ways. Uh, how should the believer uh, respond to sickness in a biblical way? How does God want us to uh, look at sickness? Well, we are going to study and look through right, the man of God through the ages, what they have to say concerning this topic. Indeed, uh, as the psalmist says, Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. I am afflicted very much. Life was hard, as it were, many persecutions and many heartaches, heart knocks. So he says, Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. I am afflicted very much, but I can overcome through thy word, which sustains my life and nourishes my soul, so that I may be able to handle the afflictions that comes upon me. And so he says in verse 109, my soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. When we would take time to meditate upon the laws of God, um, we are able to tread the path of safety. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. So you are able to see what is a threat before you. Because you have God's word guiding you. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statute all way, all the way, and even unto the end. So here you see faith's food, the Word of God. When you would feed upon God's Word, you have strength for life. It gives you the grace in times of affliction. And faith's forerunner, verse 14 to 15, Jesus Christ, our example, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. You see, in the Christian faith, we have record of the resurrection of Christ, that He has truly defeated death, that He was raised from the dead, that the disciples saw the resurrected Christ. And they were commissioned by Him before He was ascended to heaven. He is indeed that high priest, Jesus the God-man. The Bible records for us. And we do not need to see Him as it were face to face, but we see Him in the eyes of Scripture. And we believe that He is the Christ. He is that God-man, our forerunner, who has completed His work 
that enables us by God's grace to receive righteousness, Christ's righteousness imputed upon us, though undeserving, so that we have imparted, so that we have been imparted, He has imparted to us moment by moment as we look to Him to overcome temptation to sin and transgress the laws of God. When we are tempted, we look to the Lord because He was tempted and He overcome. He was tempted by the tempter, Satan, after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He did not capitulate, but Satan was defeated at every test. The last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus defeated. And we are exhorted, the disciples exhort us time and again, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For that all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, and the last thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Jesus understands what it means to be tempted. He was tested, right? seeing that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with our, the feeling of our infirmities, our weaknesses, uh, our uh, weakness to resist temptation. Well, Jesus knows. He was tested. He understands what we are going through and is able to help us overcome. So Paul exhorts us to be sober and take heed to our ways lest we fall. In every temptation, God provides a way of escape. Let us not, let not anything or anyone come in the way of our devotion to God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 to 14, Wherefore, let him that thinketh that he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, flee from idolatry. So he tells us that as we look to Christ, He is our example. Uh, he is able, for He knows the temptations that we go through, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. You see, what is the significance of that? Well, He overcame for us, so that we in our weakness, in our failures, find in Him our consolation, found in, find in Him our help, so that we can flee to Him. Flee to Him when we are faced with every temptation that seeks to derail us from that heavenly path, that seeks to take faith away so that we would not face the giants and our fourth thought, faith's fortress, the throne of grace. Let us come boldly into, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Prayer is the means by which we find strength to overcome temptation and to endure every trial. Paul says, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. That is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. 
continue steadfast looking to God. God has by means of prayer given us a citadel of hope for our troubles. Faith's fortress is a throne of grace in the tabernacle. The throne of God is located in the holy of holies, the most holy place. There rests the ark of God and on it the mercy seat. The high priest comes to the holy of holies once a year after much ceremonial cleansing to sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice upon the lid of the ark called the mercy seat so that the sins of the nation can be expiated on the Day of Atonement. When Christ completed the work of redemption, He has once and for all defeated sin, symbolic of the curtain separating the holies of holies and the holy place that was torn into two, that the access to God comes now through Christ's name, who is seated at the right hand of the Father as our advocate. So Jesus says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and he shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom his son asks for bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? You know, when Israel was in the wilderness, God's provision for them was sufficient. What did God give them when they were in the wilderness? God provided for them the law, His word, and God provided them the building of the tabernacle, there they find atonement for their sins. Symbolic of Christ, you see. Symbolic of Christ. There in Christ, they, they find all their needs met, provided for us a visual aid for our understanding. How we can appropriate help from God through prayer. God is our fortress and He is entered into by faith when we come to the Father through Christ. And so, this book was written to the discouraged believers, Jewish believers who have wrestled hard to stay in the faith, to keep trusting God. There was much to lose for them, but the Lord encourages them not to be discouraged, but to press on with our Christian profession. Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God has a purpose for our lives. God has a purpose uh, for our lives in the plan of His redemption uh, in these last times. And He wants us to be part of His will. He wants us to be a part of His kingdom work. And He wants us to do so. And unless we are consecrated and given over to Him, unless we would not uh, we'll say no to the world uh, we would unless we would give our time give our life over uh, you find that we would we cannot be very useful for the lord and so here the hebrew writer seeks for the people of god that we may find rest in him that we may enter into that rest. We may labor to enter into that rest. That labor is to trust in God, to walk with Him, to follow Him. And He provides us the means by which we can do so. Uh, His Word, He has provided us. Right? 
and his person he has provided us and also he has provided his means by which we can uh, bring ourselves before God at the throne of grace to find mercy and help in times of need. The way of God for Israel was not an easy one. God did not give them the promised land without them having to have faith to step in and overcome the giants. Those were truly giants. But for us to overcome, well, we need to label. Uh, we need to be spirit-filled, resting in the Lord and doing His bidding. And God will see us through with His Word, with the Bible that He has provided us, and with the person of Christ that He has uh, endowed us at the right hand of the Father. Uh, is there anything that uh, cannot be accomplished? Uh, nothing can, that, that will not be accomplished uh, in the will of God. And so we need to rest in Him and we need to labour for Him while it's still day. May the Lord help us. Uh, there are souls to be won. There are uh, battles to be fought in our own lives for our own sanctification. Uh, may we have the victory as we trust in Him and look to Him. May the Lord strengthen and deliver His people. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Strengthen us by Thy grace and comfort us by Thy Holy Spirit that we may find uh, in Thee uh, indeed a most, our most satisfaction and sufficiency. Strengthen Thy people. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.